It's The Real News Network, and I'm Greg Wilpert, joining you from Baltimore. The New York Times published an in-depth investigation into the early history of Donald Trump's wealth this week. Contrary to Trump's own mythology of being a self-made billionaire, the report argues that Trump made most of his early fortune on the basis of, of hundreds of millions of dollars that he received from his inheritance and from gifts from his father. Also, the investigation shows how both Donald Trump and his father, Fred Trump Sr., evaded millions of dollars in taxes through improper tax deductions, undervaluing real estate holdings, and repaying loans from, his, from father to son, and unpaid gift taxes. Here's a brief clip of a video that the New York Times prepared. I have all these people writing books about, I got this, I got that, I got peanuts. Uh, and when my father died, by that time I had already built a great fortune, and my father didn't leave a great fortune. It was Brooklyn and Queens real estate, and it wasn't a great fortune. But now what they do is they, they build it up like, oh, he left Donald money. And my father never gave any money. When my father passed away, he gave some, but by the time he had passed away, I had already built my business. I built this empire, and I did it by myself. Nobody did it for me. White House spokesperson Sarah Huckabee Sanders responded to the investigation on Wednesday. Can, can you explain what is inaccurate about that story, if there's anything that is actually inaccurate about it? It's a totally false attack based on an old recycled news story. I'm not going to sit and go through every single line of a very boring 14,000 word story. The only thing, I will say one thing the article did get right, was that it showed that the president's father actually had a great deal of confidence in him. In fact, the president brought his father into a lot of deals and they made a lot of money together. So much so that his father went on to say that everything he touched turned to gold. Uh, the president's lawyer addressed some of the specific claims uh, and walked through how the allegations of fraud and tax evasion are 100 percent false and highly defamatory. There was no fraud or tax evasion by anyone. He went on uh, much further and I would encourage you to read every word of his statement uh, which completely undercuts the accusations made by the New York Times. Joining me now to take a closer look at this investigation and its consequences is James Henry. He is an investigative economist and lawyer a, and a Global Justice Fellow at Yale University and a Senior Advisor to the Tax Justice Network. Thanks for joining us again, James. Yeah, you're very welcome. So, first of all, what do you make of this New York Times investigation? As we saw, Huckabee Sanders said it was nothing new and that it was completely false. What would you say does it reveal that it can be considered uh, new or previously unknown? Well, I'm sitting here in one of the world capitals of uh, corporate tax evasion, which is South Africa, where, you know, the mining industries for years have contrived to not pay any taxes. And the president of the country, uh, we know, has, didn't pay uh, any tax for the last eight or nine years, former President Zuma. Um, from my standpoint, you know, this is to some extent, um, I mean, it's nice to have more gory details about uh, how President Trump uh, acquired uh, his wealth with the, with the help of uh, his family and his father. Um, and, you know, and it helped to uh, sort of undermine the myth that he's created for himself, that he was uh, uh, loaned one million dollars by his dad and then turned that into ten billion dollars. Uh, Fortune's latest estimate of his net worth, by the way, just this week was that it's dropped from uh, about four point five billion to three point one billion. Uh, the Times story suggests that it may be uh, less than that. I think the you know the value of the story to those of us, us who have been following Trump, you know the facts that he didn't uh, release his tax returns, the first president not to do so, uh, and you know a lot of other evidence that other journalists had produced. This provides more details, but it's it's not really surprising that we have a president who acquired uh, a lot of his initial wealth. Uh, by virtue of real outright financial chicanery. Uh, you know, the, the president's uh, spokesperson is obviously denying this uh, at all, but uh, outside experts independent of any p political party are looking at it and say, yeah, it really was uh, tax fraud at the time. And the real mystery is why didn't the IRS and the New York State tax authorities uh, dig into that? And I think that's a question that goes to the heart of the matter, which is that we have a relatively weak our IRS and uh, New York State tax enforcement effort. It's gotten much weaker in the last decade uh, with real resources for the IRS being, uh, you know, starved uh, by the mainly by the Republicans in Congress. And so this kind of tax enforcement effort that would have uh, brought Trump to, to justice for tax fraud uh, 
back in the 1990s. Uh, you know, I think a lot of this activity that he's talking about, he's blaming on enablers like accountants and, uh, and lawyers that were advising him. That's another whole aspect of tax dodging uh, in the modern era that we really have to look at. The professionals really have become facilitators of organized tax fraud. Uh, in this case, we see Trump and his family sort of becoming uh, all together, uh, you know, using companies that they set up uh, to generate uh, bogus invoicing, uh, where the, in, the value from was transferred from the father to the, the children uh, in the form of uh, over invoicing of, of charges to the parent company. That all avoided the estate tax. It avoided the taxes that would have been paid for gifts. And so there's no question that, you know, New York tax authorities are looking at this. And so, the, so is the city of New York. I don't know if the federal IRS uh, <laughs> will do so. But at this point, it's probably too late to, to go after them for criminal tax fraud. Uh, but civil tax fraud is another matter. They may be able to go back and recover uh, some penalties for this kind of behavior. Yeah, James, I want to get uh, dig a little bit deeper in some of the issues that you mentioned. I mean, you already said that uh, we probably we basically suspected um, and know of many of these uh, shenanigans and tax evasions already, uh, and they've been reported before. Uh, but of course, I guess what perhaps is particularly striking, which you mentioned as well, is the extent to which the IRS turned a blind eye to these uh, actions or did not see them. First, I'm just wondering, and you're saying that um, that a lot of this has to do with the defunding of the IRS. I'm wondering if you could say a little bit more about uh, that process and maybe to what extent is the IRS uh, perhaps also uh, just looking the other way? I mean, to what extent is it uh, actual uh, lack of resources versus uh, uh, lack of interest? Well, there's a long one trend going way back to the 1980s where tax enforcement on the part of the IRS has been uh, you know, starved for resources. Uh, specifically, since 19, uh, since 2010, we've had uh, something like a 30% reduction in IRS uh, annual budgets for enforcement. Uh, and just this year, we've seen uh, a real sharp reduction in the number of, uh, of corporate audits and uh, audit, aud audits for wealthy taxpayers under the Trump administration. He's no fan of tax enforcement. <laughs> That's pretty clear. Um, but you know a lot of this uh, a lot of these returns were filed in the 1990s so uh and you know they would have been subject to new york taxes as well so we'd really have to go back and and sort of do some due diligence on what the enforcement uh, agencies were up to then uh you know it, it's complicated kind of uh, tax fraud that we're dealing with here where you have uh, uh bogus shell companies being set up to channel funds under the table to uh uh, you know, in the form of uh, over invoicing uh, of charges. So they were, you know, billing pencils to uh, Fred Trump and then uh, raising the price by 50 cents and then ch uh, channeling the money to the all county building supply company owned by, uh, you know, the Donald and his uh, younger brother and his sister, who happened to be a federal judge as of 1999 when Bill Clinton put her on the, on the judiciary. Um, you know, a lot of these documents came out of her, uh, apparently came out of uh, some of the documents she submitted uh, in the course of being reviewed to be a federal judge. So it's, uh, the ironies are compounded. Uh, I mean, I, I think the policy implication here, uh, you know, Democrats have made a habit out of targeting President Trump for his particular behavior. Uh, I would, I, you know, I think this is no real substitute for having a progressive tax uh, plan or for having a substantive discussion of, of some of the uh, terrible properties of the tax cut that uh, Trump enacted last year. And I think to some extent, this is a little bit uh, distracting because you know the, the major tax fraud in the US economy in the last uh, year and a half has been hiding in plain view. Uh, this, uh, this huge tax cut giveaway of you know, up to $800 billion to the largest uh, M MNCs in the country. Uh, based on the, the, the corporate tax reform that was passed and uh, sort of stuffed through Congress in December of 2017. So I hope this doesn't distract us from the real issue here, because going forward, how do we reform the tax system? We need tougher tax enforcement, and we also need uh, to revise some of the giveaways uh, uh, that were enacted last year, like the fact that 
companies have eight years to pay any tax whatsoever on the $2.6 trillion that they're supposed to repatriate, uh, you know, from offshore uh, earnings that they've stashed abroad. So, you know, I think in the, in the flurry of information about this, I appreciate the times I spent, uh, you know, months investigating uh, Donald Trump's taxes, and we now know more than ever. Uh, but, you know, maybe the, the real issue that we need to get back to is what kind of a tax system do we want to have? Well, that's, uh, I think, a very important point. I want to get back to that point in a moment. But first, I do want to look at a little bit more as to what the consequences per, uh, for Trump might be of this investigation. Uh, the Times itself, and you right. mentioned this as well, that there probably could be no uh, real legal consequences because the tax evasion is too long ago to be prosecuted. But uh, so what, what, what do you think can be the personal consequences for Trump of, of, uh, well. if this proves to be true? You know, I, su I suggested there's a distinction between the criminal tax liability where, you know, he might end up going to jail for tax fraud uh, at some point when he's released from the presidency. Um, but, uh, you know, the civil tax liability that he that the federal and state authorities might be able to go back. There's no statute of limitations on civil tax fraud. So there's nobody going to jail for that. But it might result in some hefty fines based on, uh, you know, if this if these uh, reports hold up uh, based on the fact that they're you know clear cut uh, diversions of income that avoided uh, gift tax and estate tax uh, i think the other big question though is you know does this change anyone's opinion of donald trump i mean as i said maybe five people in the country didn't know that he was a tax cheat before this report came out so uh you know will any of his uh, base any of his supporters the uh, republican party who stuff this big tax cut through last year you know they're not fond of taxes and uh it's not clear that uh, they won't look at him as something a champion here for for having beat the system uh, even uh, you know the the uh, centrist democrats have not been very proactive at taking on the enablers the lawyers and the accountants and the uh the banks that tend to facilitate this kind of tax fraud uh, when it gets to be sophisticated. So, you know, I think there's a real question on the table right now with, uh, and, you know, Steve Bannon has been making this argument that Americans uh, really want lower taxes across the board. They don't care that the rich aren't taxed. And I think that's an open issue. Uh, certainly we haven't had aggressive proponents of progressive tax taxation speaking out loudly in favor of, uh, of progressive taxes or against the Trump tax bill last year. Uh, it, it is, uh, there is evidence that most Americans oppose that bill, but uh, it's not as if it's, it's uh, front and center in the congressional elections right now. Yeah, you raised uh, two important related issues. I mean, one is the issue of uh, tax evasion, and the other is the issue of uh, just the taxation system in general and uh, how it's structured, how progressive it is. Uh, just for a second, uh, just uh, finally, actually, I want to stick to the issue of, of the evasion. And I'm wondering to what extent would you say is Trump an outlier in this area uh, in terms of how he made his wealth? Uh, or uh, to what extent is he just one among so to speak, something that all rich uh, basically are, are involved in? Well, the evidence that we've had is that uh, on the tax system is that well, while the United States had relatively high tax compliance uh, through the 1980s, when I first took a look at this for the American Bar Association in 1983, I was struck by how uh, relative to Europe, you know, the United States uh, basically had very strong tax compliance. Uh, there was a problem at the top, uh, but we didn't have much offshoring of income uh, the way they have throughout Europe. Um, I think that system has changed. I think, you know, there's uh, been a dramatic uh, problem in uh, the growth of noncompliance with U.S. income tax uh, uh, specifically and a dramatic increase in the offshoring of income, uh, plant people using ha havens. Uh, a, you know, financial secrecy to hide money offshore. So, uh, you know, Trump is one of, uh, you know, I think a, a growing number of very wealthy people who just don't respect uh, the tax system. And we've had numerous cases in the last decade uh, where there have been, uh, you know, it was a case involving Credit Suisse where they had 20,000 American uh, 
clients who were hiding money in Switzerland. That's, you know, they were fined $2.6 billion in 2014. Uh, we've had, if, you know, if they bother to investigate some of the major private banking institutions uh, in the country, they would probably come up with uh, uh, quite a few more cases. But at the moment, as I said, their uh, resources for you know, big ticket audits have declined both for individuals and for corporations. Okay, well, we're going to have to leave it there for now. I was speaking to James Henry, investigative economist and senior advisor at the Tax Justice Network. Thanks again, James, for having joined us today. You're very welcome. Good. And thank you for joining the Real News Network.